Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity, and black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and welcome to Prime. Despite pleas from Texas state Democrats, the Senate has now left Washington for a month-long recess without gaining any new ground on voting rights, an issue that was supposed to be a top priority for Democrats. Thanks to Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz, who blocked the last attempt to vote on federal voting bill before the Senate left town today, we'll now have to wait until at least mid-September when senators return from their August recess to see what happens with the bill. But you know who's still in D.C. right now? Texas state Democrats, who are not only in their fifth week of uprooting their lives, but also wrestling with the possibility of an endless summer on the run. Since their self-imposed exile, Texas Governor Greg Abbott has called two special sessions and 52 civil arrest warrants have now been issued for those choosing to remain in Washington. Joining me now to discuss is Black Voters Matter co-founder Cliff Albright. So Cliff, I thought that we were gonna get a vote on this bill. I, I was told here on the air by by elected officials, both from Texas and otherwise, that they were rewriting the, the two bills, maybe combining them into a new bill. This was all gonna get done. They told us to hold our horses. They were working it out. What happened? Yeah, Charles, thanks for having me. And, and let me say happy birthday to you. Um, you know, and I, I wish <laughs> I had you. a better birthday for, for you, right? Um, um, and, and not just for you, but for, for all of us that are in this struggle and, and for all the voters out there. But there's no other way to put it. You know, it's been, it's been an, an epic fail by Chuck, by Chuck Schumer and the Senate. You know, they weren't able to wrangle in um, the, the likes of Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema in time. Many of us have been calling now for weeks for them to delay the recess. We've been the chant has been recess can wait, um, but instead they they did this little four o'clock procedural thing, and then when it failed, thanks to the likes of Ted Cruz, as you pointed out, then they just kind of went on vacation. Um, but with that said, we're still going to keep up the demands. We're still going to keep up the calls. We're we're changing it from recess can wait to recess needs to end. Like you need to come back. There's precedent for this. You know, a few years ago, um, it was on the other side where where Mitch McConnell brought the the Senate back early to 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 deal with one of his um, bogus priorities. Um, but just like he could do that for the bad. Chuck Schumer can do it for the good. And so we're not giving up on this. We're still making the demands that they, they come back early from recess. We know the House is coming back on, on August 23rd. I'll be at the White House along with a, a bunch of organizations and along with the, the family of John Lewis. Tomorrow we'll be at the White House delivering a petition asking Joe Biden to do more on this, to lean in, to, to help end the filibuster, and also to join in on this demand that the Senate come back come back early. So we're, we're still fighting, as, as you just mentioned, all of us are still fighting, the Texas Democrats are still fighting, and at the end of the day, we're still confident that we're going to get the voting rights that we deserve. We just got to keep working harder, and we're going to have to be ungovernable um, and resort to, to direct action and civil disobedience in order to make it happen. Joining the conversation now is Texas State Representative Ron Reynolds. Representative Reynolds, I was told by another one of the, your, your fellow Texas Democrats who's in D.C. yesterday that she planned to stay in D.C. until a vote was taken on this bill. There's not going to be a vote on this bill. What happens to the Texas state delegation? Do you now go back to Texas and risk arrest? Well, Charles, uh, I'm going to join uh, in happy birthday. I won't sing to you because I don't have a good voice, but uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be in a good singing mood either because I'm ashamed of our very own Texas U.S. Senator Ted Cruz, who was the one that objected to bringing the vote before the floor the, uh, for the People Act. And so what a disgrace when you have a Texas senator who stands on the heels of a former Texan who signed the president, the, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and Lyndon Baines Johnson and who reauthorized the Voting Rights Act and President, former President Bush. And so we are united. Uh, we have arrest warrants for us right now. And so we're going to remain in D.C. until we can get some legal maneuverance because they will want nothing more than to arrest us and force us back 
on the House floor. I won't give them that pleasure. I don't mind civil disobedience. I don't mind going to jail. I went to jail last week in D.C. with Congressman Green to act of civil disobedience. But I won't allow them to shackle me up so they can take me back to the floor to pass this voter suppression bill. We're going to continue to fight and stand for truth and democracy. Right. So, so let me ask another question here, uh, Representative Reynolds, because what I'm, I'm curious about is, what is your stance on this? The very same people, many of them, who voted for the infrastructure bill are the same senators who are standing in the way of this uh, uh, voting rights bill. They want something for their states that they can get out of infrastructure. Why do sure. not the Democrats also pay, play hardball and say, we won't vote for anything else unless sure. you vote for this? Sure. Charles, Charles, that would have been my stance. You know, when you think about leverage, they had leverage there. Uh, I was with, you know, Black Voters Matter and Cliff just last week where we marched to the White House and said, you, 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 you make a choice. It's either voting rights or the filibuster, but it can't be, you got the which side are you on? I think the senators need to answer that same question. Are you for voting rights? Then you're gonna be for voting rights and you're gonna be for the end of the filibuster, if nothing else, for the exception of this legislation. This, there's nothing more critical and fundamental. This is more critical than infrastructure, but they didn't have to choose A or B. They could have chose both A and B. They chose A, they chose infrastructure, and they went on recess and said that voting rights can wait. We're dealing with the fierce urgency of now. We've been in DC now for almost uh, five weeks and we are advocating and they let us down they, they I, I, I i'm not going to sugarcoat it i'm not going to laugh when it doesn't uh, when it's not funny or scratch where it don't itch they they let us down and they left many of our black and brown brothers down all across this country and so we need to speak truth to power and we need to hold them accountable and and i'm talking to you senator manchin and senator cinema enough is enough i'm sick and tired of being sick and tired we want voting rights and we want it now Cliff, I'd like to get your opinion on that same question. I just do not understand why the Democrats are not playing the same hardball that Manson is playing. If these, these other Republicans want something, and they clearly want something, they're bucking the, the ex-president of the United States, they're being called rhinos for voting for this infrastructure bill, they're still willing to take that hit because they know they're going to get something out of it. If you know they want something, why are they not playing hardball and saying, we won't even pass this infrastructure bill unless you play some ball on the voting rights bill. Well, let me say this, Charles. You, you, you read my mind. I've actually been addressing this issue for the past few days because although the Senate missed that opportunity, the House has not missed that opportunity, right? And so because that bill that they're so proud of, that they're dancing around about the infrastructure bill, and infrastructure is cool, right? I don't, I don't want to make like infrastructure that important. but. The, that bill that they're celebrating still has to go back to the House. And just like Nancy Pelosi and, and some House members have said, look, if you don't vote on the reconciliation package, right, the budget package, until you do that, we're not voting for the infrastructure bill. They know how to use power. They know how to leverage the, the power that they have as, as the House. So now what we're going to be demanding, starting like yesterday, is that they use that same power and that same leverage over that infrastructure bill for voting rights. The House can say, look, we named H.R. 1, the For the People Act, our first priority. That's why it's H.R. 1. And until you act on our priority and pass the For the People Act in the Senate, we're not passing your infrastructure bill. So the Senate may have missed that vote, but the House can still use that power and use that leverage. And that's part of the demand that we're going to be making over the next few days. We know they're coming back on August 23rd. And so that's part of the demand that we're going to be making between now and then so that when they come back, that they use that leverage, not act on infrastructure until the Senate acts on, on, on voting rights. We know that the House did its job by passing H.R. 1. We know that at least four members of the Congressional Black Caucus have been in these streets with us and getting arrested. So the House is not the problem, but right now they have to be the source of the solution in using that power and that leverage that you're talking about. Representative Reynolds, do you believe that the Democrats in the House have the steel of spine that you 
representatives from Texas have shown in coming to D.C., do they have that still aspiring to hold up the president's agenda piece, a large piece of his agenda, in order to secure voting rights uh, 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 legislation for the country? Charles, I do. I believe that the Congressional Black Caucus, the conscience of the conscience of the Congress, and under the leadership of Chairwoman Joyce Beatty, as well as my fellow Texans, uh, Congressman Al Green, who made some good trouble and was arrested with me, and Sheila Jackson Lee, who was arrested with me, and who Hank Johnson was arrested with Cliff. I believe that we got some soldiers on the front line that are gonna put it all on the line and make it happen. I know we got some progressive uh, members of the Congress, uh, the AOCs of the world, and they are, we, we, we've spoken to them recently, and I do believe that they're willing to hold the line to get it done. Uh, the Senate, they try to be, oh, it's the tradition of the Senate and the filibuster. I believe the House is going to go hard or go home, and I believe that they're going to accomplish just what Cliff laid out. And guess what? If they don't, we're going to hold them accountable as well. But I, I have confidence, uh, Charles, that they're going to do that after many conversations that we've had with them, and most recently a conversation with AOC and Congressman Al Green, who leads the Texas delegation. We've been on the front line, we've been marching, we've been protesting. I believe that they're ready, and I believe that that's one of the reasons that they're coming back early, that they're gonna pick up the baton and they're gonna make these changes and make these demands. And then it's gonna be in the Senate's hands. Do you want this infrastructure bill? Then you better come on and get this voting rights bill. And I think that's the only leverage that we have at this point. Ron Reynolds and Cliff Albright, you guys are both optimistic tonight. You both believe that some way they're going to make, find a way to make this happen. You know, I wish I had as much confidence as you, but I will see. And when, when something happens, when we get back from recess, whether they come back early or they come back on time as scheduled, we'll be, we'd love to have you back to discuss this a little bit more. Make your birthday, your make time, it your gentlemen. birthday wish and they'll get it done. <laughs> I said, make it your birthday <laughs> Thank wish you so much, sir. Done. Absolutely. Thank you. Republican governors suddenly believe in big government solutions. I'll tell you why next. You're watching Prime on BNC.